All right, guys, good morning from blue to green, from telecom to beer. Right? So let's talk beer. It's a little bit early, but um, when I, uh, my name is Lawrence Van Roo, Chief Operations Officer. So um, when I entered the room this morning, I thought, wait a minute, it's only been six months since actually I was in the audience. And in those six months, actually it feels much longer, but in the six months, I didn't know before coming here what penalty was six months ago. Somebody told me a week before, Ganesh invited me to join this AIP con in, in September 2024. Afterwards, we signed, made an agreement, we did two proofs of concept, and guess what, we're presenting here now. So it could happen to you as well, because penalty is about speed. Um, moving on to what our proofs of concept. First of all, we did a commercial one, so we helped our team develop an application. What is the next best item to sell in 350,000 accounts? Right, so, but we're not going to talk about that, that today. Maybe another time we're going to focus on supply chain because that's what I do. Uh, I have a team managing an international supply chain. So we produce Heineken, Dos Equis, Tecate, beautiful brands uh, in Europe, Mexico, and some of actually in the, in the US. We import 33,000 containers um, to nine demand points or nine warehouses across the country. Uh, we're shipping 66,000 trucks. Uh, uh, on an annual base to 450 uh, uh, customers, and those distributors ship it to the Walmarts, the uh, convenience stores, and the hotel bars and restaurants. And our overall aim is to make sure that whenever you want to do this, that that beautiful green bottle is there. Right? That's the aim. Now, before we engage with Palantir, we were already on a digital supply chain journey, because guess what? During COVID, many of you probably experienced that, it was a mess. Right? We got breweries having to close, uh, ports congested, trucks not showing up. But what we've been doing over the past three years is like anything in supply chain, any disruption has a tendency to repeat itself. So why not solve the problem when we're in, but then find a way to connect data in such a way that you can detect that similar problem earlier, because if you detect the problem early, you don't go that deep in terms of mess. And secondly, the correction mechanisms, which are typically manual, of speeding up or slowing down in terms of oversupply, how can we automate that? So we did a whole suite in Power BI, uh, connecting the brewery, the warehouses, all of our customer data, so we know exactly every day how much they have on inventory, how much they're selling. We started to track via ocean uh, uh, satellite tracking uh, the vessels to connect what the containers are coming in. The big challenge there is to make sure that Whatever is in our data, like a Heineken 12 pack, at a customer is something else, right? So, how do you connect those? Because then the combination of data is not one plus one is, one, is two, but one plus one actually is five, right? Then we build some algorithms on top of it to be able to speed up or slow down. However, that came a little bit to an end because um, connecting all this data, we wanted to add retail stores, it became too much. So, and also the algorithms had to be started by humans could not run all the time, uh, and you get like hundreds of follow-up actions. Also, my previous uh, peer presenters said that as well. You have to have the executional capacity to implement all those changes. So, on a personal note, I love Formula One, so I always try to make a link with that. By the way, the races are starting again this weekend. But um, we had a great chassis of the car, but our engine was underpowered. So we went to Palantir because we wanted to have the best engine in, in out there in order to make this nice combination of the chassis with the engine. Now, bear with me for uh, the next slide because I think, first of all, we, we thought we got getting a great engine, which we did, but we also got a great team to work with. So the Palantir engineers were super smart, great people to work with. Uh, uh, we had also some good fun, so basically beer and tech. It's a great combo, right? Um, <laughs> Obviously, we were only drinking Heineken Zero while building, right? So it was not, uh, uh, it was like that. So, but, but the team really gelled well, well together. So, and that Tiger team actually in three months built what took us three years to build before, right? So that gives a little bit of the magnitude of, uh, of speed. Um, so, bear with me on this slide because actually this is the main message of my eight minutes. Fast forward your supply chain using AI to solve tomorrow's problems before they happen. It sounds odd, but actually that's what we do. Now let me give you one example and then we go through some real life examples in, in the Foundry software. Um, if you have a warehouse and you know 
for three weeks what orders are going, coming out, and you connect that with ocean freight data about what ship is coming in, you can, and you, of course you know how much you have on inventory, you can basically, just like in a movie or on Netflix, you can fast forward your supply chain three weeks. Because you have three weeks of outbound data, three weeks of inbound. So that means that you can see where the problems are going to happen. And in the supply chain, there's always imbalance. There's always you know, a warehouse that has too much or too little of a product. But you can also do that at customer level, at port level, at brewery level. And we connected all of that. I'm going to show you three algorithms that we use. We have many more, but just to give you a flavor of it. It's going to be a little quick. So um, what you see here is, let's say, the background of uh, people love maps. So these are the maps. So all the stores are in there. The warehouses are in there. You see the flows. Uh, we were focused basically on the West Coast, because we are here now. Um, there's a potential future out of stock. So we have a new algorithm called Abu. I'll get to the name later. But Abu actually looks at if a customer has ordered the product and for example, it, because we have a lead time of three weeks, which is normal in the beer business, it has a risk of running out of stock while we are still having to execute the order. Abu is saying, you got to pick up that product, in this case a Heineken 00 uh, bottle, uh, six pack, and automatically move the delivery date earlier. So, whereas so, no, normal supply chains run FIFO, eh, so who places the order first and we execute in that particular order, Actually, this algorithm helps us to pull something ahead of the pack, so bypass a few others, and make sure that actually the product is available at the distributor. Because in the end, remember what I said, when you want to do this, we, we, need to have the, we need to have the beer there. Right? So it's about deviation from a previous process. Let's move to a next one. Um, next example is about drayage. Drayage, for those not uh, involved in the maritime uh, industry, drayage is actually getting a container from a port to a warehouse. Now, if a vessel arrives, the containers are always stored in this stack. The first few days are for free, but after a few days you start paying a lot of penalties. So demurrage and detention is a big cost, so that we want to prevent. So typically, the general, general process is the container that has been hanging out in a port for a long time will be picked first. We have a new algorithm called Dr. Dre, and Dr. Dre will pull it from I mean, in this example, it was the Heineken, the Amstel, I don't know if you were looking at it, the Amstel was just arriving, and we got to pick it from the stack immediately. So again, an example of acceleration, putting something ahead of the pack. Now, those two algorithms we, we were using before. However, with Palanty, we can use them all the time, not dependent on human intervention. Also, we can scale executing all those deviations. Now, the last example, because I think I'm running a bit out of time, um, is smart shipping. So making beer will cost like three weeks. It takes you three weeks to brew the beer, maybe one second to package it, and then we need three to eight weeks to, you know, to get it here, depending on where you are. New York is shorter, Seattle takes a bit longer to get there. Now, what, what we do is we brew and produce on forecast. However, by the time that all the resources are arranged, materials, people, etc., and you're, you're about to fill the bottle or the can, things will have changed. So all of these uh, 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 imbalances can have moved. So we, together with Palantir, we developed an algorithm that can take two days before the container is being loaded, take whatever is produced, take an existing booking, and swap what goes where. So an example that was in the background, we needed a Heineken 12-pack. It was planned to go to Houston. That cargo we're going to put in a container going to Seattle. Because again, we see in the future where the problems are going to happen. Now, uh, you had me talk about Abu, Dr. Dre, Neptune. Those are creative names. And it's very important because the users came up with those. Because I want to make sure that whoever uses AI or algorithms owns the algorithm and doesn't see it as a threat. So now, in our DCS, our daily control system, we talk about, oh, Dr. Dre said this and he's doing that. So you bet you're adding a person to your team, a sidekick to the people and, and empower them. Secondly, I think it also has change has to be leader-led. So for me, as head of operations, I'm the, probably one of the biggest users of our command center, algorithms, etc. Because if I adopt the change, I know my team will. And, and secondly, reward and recognition is super important. 
We have, inside the Heineken Group, we're one of the best supply chains on many dimensions. Also, our customers are, are sharing with us that our availability for the last two years is better than most uh, even domestic producers, which is something I would have never have imagined. So what's next? We're going to well, we'll show the uh, peak, sneak peek under the hood, that everything is in foundry and all the algorithms and are moving and, and doing things in order to actually speed up or slow down. We're going to a second stint with, uh, with Palantir, where we're going to move all of this into production. So, so far, we're proof of concept. We're going to move it in production, actually drive the benefit in the year where we actually implement it. So that's all next. And um, let me end by saying, I think, Frank and I are head of digital. We're here. We'd love to talk to you. We'd like you to challenge us, because we want to be the best. And then we should be open to sharing what we have and make it better together with you. And last but not least, my final note is fast forward your supply chain using AI to solve tomorrow's problems before they happen. Thank you very much.